Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to the organizers. And uh, it's really a great pleasure to be here and to speak. Um, and I want to uh, revisit uh, some old questions about Torelli theorems uh, that Arthur, of course, had very influential papers, especially with the super singular K3s. Um, and I want to try to sort of rethink a little bit how we might phrase Torelli theorems in positive characteristics. So uh, I'll talk about uh, joint work with, with uh, Max Lieblich came up in the previous talk. Um, and just to get ideas fixed, let me begin by reviewing some uh, basic Torelli theorems uh, over the complex numbers. Um, and I'll say, I have in mind other Torelli theorems, but let me talk about K3 surfaces uh, for this lecture, but uh, so let's say we have a, uh, a K3 surface. Um, and so uh, well, what do you consider? You first consider the, the lattice, um, which is uh, the singular cohomology with Z coefficients, which has an uh, inner product. Um, and so there's sort of two bits of data. There's this, and which is sort of the analytic part, and then there's the Hodge filtration. Uh, which is somehow the algebraic part. Uh, so for the K3, of course, it just looks uh, um, yeah, well, there's really just one piece. Uh, so you uh, Really, you just need to know this, uh, which is uh, the H0 of x kx. From, from that and the inner product, you can get the, um, uh, the F1. Um, and so uh, the Torelli theorem, in its uh, standard formulation, uh, says the following. So uh, two K3 surfaces. x and y um, are isomorphic if and only if um, there exists um, an isomorphism lambda x. So that means including the uh, inner product, uh, preserving the filtrations. But it doesn't mean that you can lift the isomorphism. No, no. So this is a delicate question. So uh, as people were <laughs> going to, I think some of, yeah, so as Ofer says, so let me remark. Um, and this is an, actually, I, I'm glad you asked, because I want to discuss this point in positive uh, characteristics. So if, in general, you needed to take a Kähler class to a Kähler class. So uh, if. Uh, so let me give it a name. Let's say sigma. If sigma takes a Kähler class to a Kähler class, um, uh, then sigma lifts to an isomorphism. Um, uh, let me put it sigma tilde x to y. Right. Um, so this is what you were asking, I think. Yeah. And also, it is unique, the lifting. <laughs> <laughs> ah, uh, if it's unique. I, <laughs> let me not say anything on the spot. I'm not sure uh, on, on my feet. Well, more precisely, it's pretty interesting that a harm with x to y goes to harm with lambda x to y. What do you say about the back sets? Oh, I sound yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the question, right? Is is it in uh, is it injective, right? Yeah. Injective. No, that's the question. Oh, yeah, okay. I don't. I, 
maybe not say something wrong. So, okay. Um, okay, and so, um, right, and so in general, you can arrange this uh, after, can arrange this uh, by reflecting. across uh, minus two curves. Um, so this is somehow a very classical story. Um, and so, I mean, you see in the very formulation, it's not clear what you should do in positive characteristic be because of this integral lattice, right? So, um, of course, uh, Ogus uh, proved a uh, Torelli theorem for super singular K3s. Um, which is really the only result I know which uh, uses cohomology as, as sort of the, you know, you have a, if you have an isomorphism of cohomology respecting some structure, then you have isom isomorphic varieties, okay? So, um, sort of the, the rough idea so when you say you can arrange this, I think you also need maybe to apply minus one. Oh, no. I'm not sure because the reflection along minus two curves cannot be enough if there are no minus two. So you can have the, the automorphism minus one, minus the identity. Yeah. Certainly. Ah, ah, yes. Uh. And minus, minus one. This probably is. Okay. Let's see. Let me see. Yes, I'm sure you're right. Let me, let me, uh, so, yeah, let me put a, you are just put minus one, minus one. Let, well, let me, let me just put it like that. Okay, so, uh, okay. So, um, so the rough idea here is to try to make a, a, a formulation even in positive characteristic uh, we'll replace lambda x here uh, by the derived category of um, category of coherent sheaves on x. Um, and uh, the Hodge filtration Uh, will get replaced by, so what filtration can you put on uh, something coming out of the derived category? Well, you can go to the Grothendieck group, uh, tensor Q, which by Riemann Rock is uh, um, the, the Ch Chow group uh, tensor Q, and there you have a filtration, uh, which is a filtration, I mean, it's graded, so it uh, gets replaced by the co-dimension filtration here. Now this is a very uh, uh, you know, loose sort of analogy, uh, but I'll explain a Torelli theorem for K3s in this context and, and deduce uh, consequences. Okay? So, um, but in general, I don't know to what extent, I mean, it could be that this is a much stronger kind of result or condition that you could have Torelli theorems sort of in the derived sense uh, when it might not hold there. Will the result you're trying to explain give a new proof of the complex numbers? No. In fact, uh, this is, uh, I'll explain, sketch the argument for the proof, which will reduce to the complex case, uh, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, all right. So, so let me give a precise statement. Um, Okay, so uh, K, let's say, is algebraically closed and characteristic not two um, for some technical reasons. Um, and so X over K is a K3 surface. 
Um, and so there's some of this came up in the previous talk, but let me uh, get it on the board. So X and Y are called Fourier Mukai partners. If uh, we have an equivalence of triangulated categories uh, between the bounded derived categories of coherent sheaves. Um, and uh, so, uh, and as I said, uh, I've, so there's one point which is, which I'll come back to later, but if you take the growth and degroup of the triangulated category, uh, you have to choose this isomorphism in the right way, but. but you have an isomorphism here with uh, Chow groups. Um, and actually, for the theorems I'm going to discuss, uh, I could pass to numerical equivalence, but anyway, uh, that's not too important. So I view this as being filtered. Um, I'm in the So uh, this would be F2, F1, F0. Okay. So just in the uh, simple way. And then uh, the theorem is that if uh, X and Y are K3 surfaces, <coughs> over K, and there exists an uh, equivalence of uh, triangulated categories d of x, d of y, uh, preserving the filtration, filtration. then uh, x is isomorphic to y. Okay. So, uh, it is, at least with this analogy, between viewing the derived category as an integral structure um, plus the hot filtration, then you have isomorphism. And the equivalence of triangulated categories is supposed to be k linear or? Ah, yes. Uh, Otherwise, you could twist by automorphism of k. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, let's put, yeah, thank you. And it is just triangulated categories in the old sense, not in the any infinity. There is no, no, no infinity. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, just derived category of coherent sheaves. So, so what about the previous question? The map from the isomorphism of x to y to the equivalence of. So this I don't know the answer to. This is a very interesting question, um, which is so I, and. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I'll sketch the argument because it involves, you know, deformation theory and uh, sort of a lot of the classical uh, tools of the de deformation theory of K3 surfaces, but uh, the proof does not in any way tell how uh, the isomorphism you produce is related to the equivalent. Yeah, could you remind us what's known for surfaces of other kinds? Because there's a whole class of surfaces where isomorphism by right category applies to isomorphism. Ah, so if either the canonical sheaf is ample or anti-ample, then you know it already. Yeah. Uh, so then you don't need the filtration. Okay, so uh, what's interesting here, maybe I'll put it here, uh, remark, um, is that, and I'll explain exactly what the examples are, um, uh, d of x equivalent to d of y is not enough. So this is sort of very classical Mukai or love many people. Okay, so you need you, you can't just ask for equivalence of triangulated categories. This is not enough to imply that X and Y are isomorphic. Um, but actually this result, as I'll explain, uh, will tell you exactly to what extent that fails. Um, okay.
Do you need to assume that Y is a K3 surface? No, uh, that follows uh, from having the equivalence of triangulated categories. Yeah. Um, so, so let me review. Uh, there's sort of two ingredients that came up uh, in Francois' talk, but let me review uh, just a, a, a few basics. Uh, so, so for Mukai transforms, uh, so that's um, right. So x, y are smooth projective over k, um, if I have an object of the derived category of the product, uh, I get such a functor um, by sending k to uh, rp2 lower star uh, p. So that's sort of the standard transform, uh, pull back, tensor, and push down. Um, and a theorem of Orlov, which is really the sort of key thing to get things off the ground, is that uh, if I have an equivalence uh, is an equivalence <coughs> of uh, triangulated categories, of K linear, uh, then F is of this form, phi P, uh, for some P. Okay, so uh, um, this, this tells you not only well, it gives you some geometry. It also tells you the candidates, I mean, how, how you produce, as, as came up in Francois' talk. Uh, what you do is you, you, I mean, how could you have a uh, complex on the product? The most natural thing is to take y to be a moduli space of sheaves on x, and then p to be the universal family. And dx is db coherent? Or? Yes. Uh, all the derived categories will be the derived categories are coherent sheaves on smooth projective varieties, so there's no issue about uh, finite, I mean, uh, they're regular. Bounded. Yeah, yeah, bounded. Yeah. Okay, so what are the, exactly the moduli spaces? Um, yeah, so I, I want to actually write down, uh, so x over k is a k3 surface. Um, and so then, uh, let me fix normalization. So uh, for a complex, you have the Mukai vector, which is the churn character uh, times the Todd class of x square root. Okay, and I view this as being an element of. Um, and for K3, it's defined integrally. In general, you would have to put uh, some denominators, but for K3, it's uh, it's there. Um, and it just, I mean, it has a very simple description. It's the rank C1 of E, and then the rank plus C1 of E squared over 2 uh, minus C2 of E. Okay, that's the formula. Um, and let me also fix a polarization. on x, so an ample class. Um, and then uh, you can consider the stack of, of uh, so Giesecker uh, semi-stable sheaves on x uh, with uh, Mukai vector, this vector are given, uh, okay, so you fix your new and then you make these uh, moduli spaces. Um, and uh, so, and then, so for good, 
Lee, as, as Francois mentioned, uh, uh, what do you have? Uh, we have A, uh, every semi-stable sheaf sheaf is stable, um, which means that uh, this thing here is a, a GM gerv over uh, some algebraic space, uh, and in fact, uh, is a trivial GM gerb over a K3 surface, uh, which I'll denote in Roman font, uh, like that. And uh, so, I mean, where the universal sheaf lives on the product of x with a stack, um, but since it's a trivial gerb, uh, you can descend the uh, universal sheaf, sheaf to, um, so I'll put universal uh, sheaf E on X cross, so now you have two K3 surfaces and a sheaf on it um, induces an equivalence uh, phi E of x, d of n h. Okay. Um, so uh, this gives a supply of uh, uh, Fourier Mokai partners for a K3 surface. Let's see. Ah, oh, there's another board. Um, so let me state uh, a theorem, uh, which is that uh, every uh, Fourier Mokai partner or meaning K3 surface with equivalent derived category uh, of X uh, is of this form. Okay. And does it mean that the equivalence is after isomorphism given by the universal shift, or that there is another equivalent? Another equivalence, yeah. So I'll explain actually how this follows from uh, the, the other theorem, which uh, where already that ambiguity is present. Right? So I'm not saying anything about, uh, what, I don't know how to relate the equivalence to, uh, uh, I don't know how to lift the equivalence on the derived category to an isomorphism. Yeah. Yeah, in either case, okay? Um, so when you say of this form, you mean for some E in the corresponding thing, is that it? Uh, let me put it here. Is a M H V for some V and H. Okay? Yeah. Uh, so I should say over C, uh, this is uh, somehow classical. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's see, there are many names here I should put there. Uh, so, but, but I want to sketch uh, in the spirit of these minus two curves uh, how I view this in relation to the, the, the filtered uh, result. Um, So that's by the following proposition. Um, <coughs> so let's suppose I have two K3 uh, surfaces. And um, phi from d of x to d of y, an equivalence uh, of triangulated categories, of derived categories. Um, then there exists 
uh, choice. Then there exists M H V and uh, sorry, let me say it the way it's written here. Then after precomposing phi with an auto equivalence. of d of x and an equivalence uh, d m h v <coughs> of x, so arising in that way, um, you can arrange for uh, the equivalence <coughs> to be filtered. Okay, so you start out with something which is not a filtered equivalence, but then you have these basic steps you can do. Uh, you can apply the auto equivalence of d of x, and you can do this uh, game of replacing x by moduli space of sheaves. Okay, and so once you do that, uh, then you can make, and this is just playing games with the sort of invariance of the, on the, the Chow groups, and so then the corollary is uh, this result, right? So, so that implies this, this theorem here. Right? That, so once you have the, the result that two filtered, if you have a filtered equivalence, then they're isomorphic, then from this proposition you get that every uh, fourier mokai partner is a moduli space of sheaves. Yeah. So, and, and this MHV sits on the x side, right? Like yeah, I mean, I could do it on the other side too, but I have to, yeah. I want y to be MH of v, so I precompose to make it uh, filtered. Okay. All right, so uh, let me state another theorem, um, which is more subtle and uh, which is there are only finitely many for, uh, for, a given k, for a given x, there are only finitely many, finitely many Fourier Mokai partners. Um, and two, um, if x is super singular, so for a positive characteristic, uh, then no non trivial uh, for your kind of partners. Okay, so. Um, so even though I think this condition about preserving the, the co-dimension filtration looks very strong, um, in, in the case of K3 surfaces, you can recover uh, known the, the, what's known about uh, Fourier Mackay partners of K3 surfaces from that one sort of Torelli theorem. Um, okay. Okay, so I want to discuss uh, the, uh, the idea of the proofs. Um, and slash uh, deformation theory um, of K3s and K3s with the Fourier Mokai transforms and, and so on. Um, so, uh, let me give sort of the idea over, over C. Uh, I think it's the, so the, the, the filtered derived equivalence gives an isomorphism. 
uh, follows very easily from the classical uh, Torelli theorem. So why is that? Uh, the point is that if you have x and y, uh, as, uh, then you get this phi p, which is given by pullback, tensor, and uh, push down. So that passes to any cohomology theory. Um, and so phi p induces an, an isomorphism Um, on uh, this, what French Swak denoted H tilde, and I think my normalization is slightly different than his. Um, I think if I change it now, I'll get confused, so let me put it. I think you had a shift by one. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so you do this H, this, this uh, uh, Mukai lattice, um, and uh, and so h tilde, so I, this is, sorry, I should, my board work is not good. So I define it in this way. Um, so you, so you, you get an isomorphism uh, on these, on these uh, Mukai lattices. And the filtered condition tells you that it, does indu it induces an isomorphism on h2. Right? So filtered implies you get an isomorphism on um, on H two, um, preserving the hot filtration, uh, the hot filtration, um, and so we're done by the usual Torelli. So in some sense, this is a much stronger, we're imposing a much stronger condition than the usual uh, Torelli condition. Um, let me just remark over here, um, I should have said this before, in this case, um, so if you think about it, if I have a point here, um, uh, let's say k of z, I look at the skyscraper sheaf of a point z in this moduli space, the corresponding sheaf over here is uh, uh, the sheaf um, corresponding to the point z. So the ranks in general get, get messed up, right? So here, when you have this kind of equivalence, uh, uh, it's not going to preserve the filtration. I should have remarked that. Um, but once you do, so in general, these things get scrambled up. Uh, but once you preserve the filtration, then you're in the usual uh, Torelli theorem setting. Okay, so um, how, what do you do in characteristic P? So now we're in a bit of a delicate uh, deformation theory problem of K3 surfaces. Uh, we want to think about, uh, so how to deform. Deform x, y, and p. Uh, this, the triple consisting of two K3 surfaces, an object, and the derived <laughs> category and the product. Um, and so how do you do that? Um, well, um, you consider this very sort of strange stack, um, which is the stack of perfect complexes Uh, on x cross y, uh, sorry, on, I'm doing on x, uh, which are simple, um, and I'll put it universally glueable. All right, so with this p is some object of the derived category, so simple means that the so automorphism functor um, is G, just GM, so it looks like a simple sheath. Uh, and this universally gluable means that the uh, negative x sort of functors, um, P, P, zero for um, I less than zero. Okay, so you impose some condition, and if you impose these conditions, uh, then this is an old, uh, paper of Lieblick, uh, which is that this is an algebraic stack. Okay. 
Okay, so you have some uh, geometric object to work with. Um, because it's big and non-separated and uh, all that kind of thing. Um, but, well, in general, if you don't put the, uh, the simple condition, um, but the simple condition uh, actually gives us a, a reasonable uh, space here. Um, so the simple condition Uh, implies that you have uh, that this thing dx is a GM gerb over an algebraic space um, which maybe I'll Roman font dx. Uh, so you get the follow so so given a uh, Fourier Mokai equivalence uh, P. So we put phi P from uh, D of X to D of Y. Um, so you have this P in the product. Um, you can view it sort of asymmetrically as being, if you think about y here, and then here's x cross y, you can view it as a family of, sh of complexes on x uh, parameterized by y. So here's p. Um, and what, so if you look at a point, you have to verify things like, you basically have to compute uh, x to i of py, py. Right, so for these conditions, you have to x0 and the negative x. And this is happening in the derived category of x. Uh, but because this is a Fourier-Mukai equivalence, this is the same as x to i d of y um, k of y k of y. Okay, so you compute the... Uh, you, you can bring it to the triangulated category on the other side. Okay, so these conditions are actually easy to verify when you have a Fourier Mukai uh, equivalence. And so what you end up with is a map uh, from y to the stack, which is this mu given, let's say mu p. Okay. So it, it gives you this map. And uh, we call this mu p bar. And the condition, that uh, phi p is an equivalence, actually full of, is fully faithful, let me put this way, it's fully faithful, uh, is equivalent to uh, this mu p bar is an open immersion. Okay, so, okay, so you, you, somehow translate uh, the condition uh, to have a Fourier Mukai equivalence uh, to, to sort of a map from this thing to this algebraic space. Okay. So, um, all right, so what can you do with this? Uh, so let me state a proposition. Uh, well, let, let's consider now the deformation functor of, of X. So we have a K3 surface, we have its deformation functor, uh, which we know everything about. Um, so A goes to the liftings. Of the X isn't separated, is that the point? Which, which the, the, the X is not separated? Uh, the Roman font? Yeah, nothing is separated. I mean, I'm not saying anything about global geometry. Um, yeah. Uh, liftings of X to A. Okay, so we have the deformation functor of X and um, <coughs> And I'll put it over here. Proposition. Um, there's an isomorphism. There's an isomorphism. Of, of functors. I mean, these are pro-representable, so 
Um, Like this uh, of uh, deformation functors, so that's not such a big deal, but uh, such that uh, for every L in the Picard group of X, uh, so I'd say X and Y are K3 surfaces, uh, uh, K3, and I have a Fourier Mukai equivalence uh, dx to dy. Um, and, ah, sorry, you're right. Um, and let me further assume, ah, okay. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, sorry, thank you. So once, it, when you're in this situation, uh, so you can, after, after changing your choice, changing the choice of p, so you always have to do these kind of uh, basic operations, uh, can arrange that uh, 1, uh, 5p100 zero, zero is uh, 1, zero, 0, And so I'm assuming this is filtered also. Sorry. Um, so I'm putting a lot of conditions. Uh, but once you have that, you can arrange that and that the it takes the ample cone of x to the plus or minus of the ample cone of y. So now you see why I, there's really not much control over. Uh, you start with some general equivalence, make it filtered, and then you do more operations to uh, make further. So, so uh, there's not much control. But once you do this, um, and the proposition is uh, that you, sort of yeah, reflection. It's sort of like the. I mean, I view it by very rough analogy with the classical uh, theory as as making reflections and and, and uh, things like that. Yeah. Um, so then you have uh, an isomorphism of deformation functors. delta from the deformation functor of x to the deformation functor of y, such that for every L in the Picard group, um, so we're looking at k3, so the deformation functor of x with a line bundle is a subfunctor, um, and so you can ask what it does. So delta of this deformations of the pair xl um, maps isomorphically to the deformations of the pair y, 5L. Okay, so, uh, and because of the way I set it up, uh, this, is, this is the class of a line bundle. Okay, so in other words, you can, you can use the fourier mukai transform to identify the de deformation spaces in a way that matches up the, the, the line bundle. So I'll, I'll explain, I'll explain, yeah. Um, Maybe I should say there's the basic problem we encounter, um, which I think I, I'll have time to mention. In the super singular case, um, you run into the. So here, I'm, so in the classical literature, like in your papers, you consider deformations of X and an L, but you could also consider deformations of X with a bunch of line bundles. And that gets more and more complicated the, the more line bundles uh, you consider. But this is. An important problem, I think, because uh, there's a number of situations where you might try to deform, if you have a high rank K3, uh, you might want to deform uh, the K3 plus, a, well, of course, you, if it's super singular, you can't deform the whole uh, lattice, but you, or whole neuron severity, but you might do want a, a big uh, lattice, okay, uh, big Picard of the generic fiber, okay. Um, Right, so how's this going to work? So the construction of delta. Um, yeah, so, uh, well, I think it's basically this picture. Uh, so you take, uh, 
let's say I have A is an Artinian local W algebra, um, and I have uh, XA over A. All right, so then um, I get a lifting of the DX and the, and the DY. So I get, uh, let me do it on, I get DXA, and then here I have the, uh, the DX that I started with. Um, and then here's my Y, which maps here. This is the mu P bar, and this is open. Right? And so, well, open subsets lift uniquely. Uh, so, uh, okay, and this is open. So there it is. Uh, that's the deformation. Okay, so this defines delta. Do you know the Y dancing dx? No. It, do, it doesn't matter. I just I have an open subset and I have a nilpotent thick a nilpotent thickening of uh, dx could be as bad as you want. Uh, yeah. Uh, it is nice in the sense that it is locally of finite type. Sure. Yeah. Or the stuff over A is it sensible <laughs> flat over A? Yeah. So there's a subtle point which is special to the K3, which is that I need to know this is flat over over A. Yeah. And locally of finite type and uh, so on. Yeah. That's right. I'm, I'm sweeping a lot under the rug, but uh, the main subtle point is, I mean, why couldn't this just be dx? Right? Maybe it was, you need the flatness of this over here. Generally, it doesn't satisfy any separation. Uh, no, I don't believe so, no. Well, there are several large white spaces. Certainly, it is quasi-separated. Yes. But not locally separated. Or not. Uh, I'd have to sit down and think about it, but yeah, yeah. Um, but, it, but it, I mean, it's an important point that it doesn't actually, I mean, you have to verify that it has some reasonable properties, but not, it doesn't have to be a projective variety or anything. I mean, it, it, you're lifting open subsets. Okay. Um, now, in fact, uh, there's a little bit more here, which is you can lift the P. So you see there's an annoying thing, which is that the Roman font DX is something like a coarse moduli space, and you really want to lift the Fourier Mackay transform too. Uh, so, in fact, this takes a little more work, uh, can lift uh, the P, um, which is really the, mu the, I mean, this is this map mu P uh, to P A over um, in D of uh, X A cross over A with Y. Okay, so this takes some more work, but uh, let me not dwell on that. Um, okay, and so now, uh, how do you proceed? Uh, you use uh, this here, because we want to lift to characteristic zero. You better preserve some ample line bundle so you can algebraize and uh, get the whole thing. So now, uh, so the conclude. So, so, so what do you get? Um, you get a... Uh, let's say a mixed characteristic DDR, V, and um, deformations X, Y, P over V, lifting uh, X, Y, P. Um, and then... Uh, yeah, you know, the def X over L is flat over W. Yeah, I know. I, I, yes, absolutely. So I need that I have at least one uh, map to a mixed characteristic DVR, right? So, and, and that'll, I'll mention a related point. Um, right, and so, um, and so then uh, generic fibers, and actually, I mean, there's a lot to check, but this deformation here, actually, if I start out with a filtered equivalent satisfying those conditions, this deformation is also going to be a Filtered equivalence, okay? Is it unique? Oh, is it PA unique? Is it unique, the PA, or the, or the script P? Or uh, this, this, thing I was this thing here? Yeah. Let's see, so I have to calculate. Uh, uh, no, I don't need it to be unique, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, it has to do with this, uh, the, the sort of gerb there, and whether there could be a cohomological, I mean, a torsor that. Uh, uh, yeah. So, how do you get this V?
Well, okay, so I, I so what do I do? I choose my uh, an ample line bundle on X, and then I look at the versatile def the de deformation space of XL, and then it gets paired up here. And then the the only thing I have not sort of discussed is why you actually get this the, an actual P, uh, because you only have a map to the the Roman font. Uh, right, so I have a map to the coarse modulus space. I have to trivialize uh, a gerb uh, over that to to to, uh, to get the actual P. Okay. All right. So then, uh, generic farmers admit uh, a filtered for Mackay equivalence, and so then you have to replace V by another extension to get the generic fibers isomorphic, and then you go back down because using some minimality of K3 surfaces, okay? And then uh, uh, use characteristic zero result, zero result, and then go back, back to closed fiber, okay? So there's a lot of technical points here, but uh, I think the key idea is this kind of... Uh, sorry, yeah, I, I should make uh, complete DVR. So, so the, the, the set that completely preserves the filtration is automatic in this case. It's not nothing to impose. No, it's not something. Yeah, it just follows from the. It, it comes from this sort of big stack here. But yeah. Um, okay. Um, all right. So let me make uh, a remark. So that that gives uh, uh, that if you you have a filtered equivalence and they're isomorphic, the finiteness result. How do you get the finiteness result and the, uh, I think the super singular case is maybe the most interesting uh, because how could you prove that, uh, uh, in fact, that what, if, you, if you have a super singular K3, then any formal chi partner has to be um, um, itself. Uh, this argument that I just sketched. Uh, it does not lend itself very well to that, but the, 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 the problem you encounter, so for a super singular, singular K3, so lat sort of people who do lattice theory know that if you have a neuron severity which has rank at least three in characteristic zero, then you don't have non-trivial Fourier Mackay partners. Okay, so now the game becomes uh, deform. Um, K3 surface plus a rank plus a rank three uh, subgroup E inside uh, neuron severity of X, and there's a lot to do, but uh, that's the basic deformation theory problem you encounter, um, and so. Um, and, and so in this case, you, you can calculate using uh, uh, the, the, the deformation theory of, uh, of polarized K3s that uh, you do still have a characteristic zero point of the, the deformation space, but maybe I'll put it as a question in general. Uh, I don't know in general. Uh, I don't know how to describe. Um, Deformations, let me write this way, deformations of X E. So where you fix the groups on Arthur's paper, there's discussion of if you have a, uh, you, you can get a quadratic thing, you know, the, make a quadratic extension and in, in Deline's article and so on. Uh, <laughs> but in general, uh, what does the deformation space of something like that look like? I don't know. Um, all right. It might not have any characteristic zero points. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. um, super. Yeah. For. I mean, take the super singular case. Yeah. When you look at this thing about this P and P A, so there was a GM gerb yeah. there, and uh, uh, when you have this the, the opinion the local ring deformation, the it could be that. Uh, you're talking about characteristic piecing, so it could be that you don't know that the H2 class is zero over an opinion. So the, the point is that you do some trick with the determinant, 
uh, of the P and uh, relate that to the obstruction class. Uh, so, th so there is a, a serious argument there. I mean, it's not, uh, um, but you have to do, uh, you're right, there is an obstruction in general, uh, but if you calculate what that obstruction is, you can relate it to the determinant uh, of P. And so if you do it, if you set it up right, you, you can arrange for that obstruction to vanish. The determinant of the, ah, okay. No, no, you, you, I mean, you can, because it's a one-dimensional obstruction space, and, and you, can, you, you, can, you have to relate what that obstruction is to something uh, having to do with P. Yeah. So it, it's a non-trivial uh, point. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see. Yeah. Two or three minutes. Okay, so maybe I'll uh, just mention sort of uh, a couple more questions here. So, uh, so I don't know how to do this in general. Uh, the other point is, which was raised several times, is uh, the way this is set up. This, you know, uh, the isomorphism. How, construct the isomorphism, right? I mean, uh, from uh, D of X. I, I, really, I don't know how to just take the derived equivalence and then construct the map. Right? This seems, uh, I don't know where to, to do it. Uh, it's tempting to think about the Chow group of zero cycles and sort of, if it's filtered, you get a map on, on zero cycles, but uh, that sort of looks like you should just see the morphism, but I don't know how to do that. Um, yeah. Um, and uh, I guess the other question, I won't write it, is I, I don't know in general um, whether filtered equivalence uh, is a much stronger condition. A derived equivalence is much stronger than sort of classical Torelli. There seems to be promising uh, progress in the hypersurface case, but uh, I think that's about where we're at right now. Thank you. So um, is the last problem it, the problem in generalizing to non-algebra circles space here? No, the problem is that uh, sort of the way I've presented, the way I understand it, I don't know. I mean, in the in the in the honest Torelli situation, you know a lot about the isomorphism in relationship to the what it ha what you do in cohomology, right? So you have some transformations that you understand, and. Uh, uh, then you can lift it to an isomorphism if it you know, takes the Kähler class to the Kähler class and so on. So, uh, but here I think it's a total mess. Uh, you know, what the, what is the relationship between the isomorphism and the equivalence of triangular categories? I don't know. Exactly. Which isomorphisms correspond uh, specifically by, 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 by morphism? Right, yeah. So, so given you take this thing, how could you even, you know, maybe you could impose some condition that says then there's an actual map. Right, that gives it, yeah, I don't know. Very nice question. So we discussed this, the super singular case. Yes. So the object, you have the, the ordinary case. Yeah. So, and then the uh, uh, formal modular, you know, groups of uh, formal core. Ah. Yes. So then what is, uh, is that, how does the formation theory work? And, uh, I don't see it because either it's local or global, I, I'm not so sure. Uh, could you repeat the question? Well, uh, what is the story for uh, for uh, ordinary? Well, I guess it, for, in the ordinary case, we know dx is really clear from well, defx, not dx, but defx. Oh, defx, yeah, 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 defx, yes, yes. yes. Ah, yeah. So what hap and what happens under this uh, delta? Well, uh, what is the story then? Yeah, I don't know because I don't understand sort of the general phi p, mm. right? So. Uh, I mean, somehow. Well, the, the basic ingredient was the, the dependent space to uh, Roman dx. Uh, yeah. It was x1. It That's right, yeah, yeah. So that was the basic ingredient to get your. Yeah, so then I have to see what these churn classes do as it moves over to the other side. Yes. Ah, I see, I see. Actually, Francois suggested, and I, I think this is another promising, it, it may work, to prove it using Arthur's theorem. On super deformed to the super singular uh, K3. So this is. This, uh, yeah. Any more questions? Oh, thank you.